Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. This is a weekend update for the week ending August 30, 2019. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. If it's early on Saturday, where you are, grab a cup of Java. If it's later than that, or even another day, or notwithstanding that it may be Saturday morning, grab a better drink, put your seatbelt on, we have a lot of stuff to discuss. The first thing right out of the gate, which is the obvious question that many traders want to know is, was today a reversal day? You see the candle on the screen. We hit the 50 period moving average. We'll get back to all this stuff in a few moments. We're just doing a 30,000 foot view. The question that comes up is, is this a reversal day? And the other thing we have is the market actually getting rejected from the pivot highs and the 50 period moving average that we've been discussing. So what jumps out, at least for me, on the screen when I bring up this chart? In my mind, today, there's actually three things. The first thing is the same thing that we talk about every single night, which is essentially this bear flag pattern. Can't help but notice it. It's on the screen, it's a big deal, it jumps off the page. The second thing that I noticed today, and maybe today this was the first thing since I'm fully aware of the bear flag pattern, but I also notice the reversal candle, or at least what some traders will call a reversal candle. Also, you'll notice a 292.50 on the screen. Let me just address that real quick. Traders are probably wondering, what is that number, why is it there? That was basically an intraday pivot. Here's a 15 minute chart and you can see how the market basically traded in and around that number for the majority of the day. There was a spike below, there was a spike above a couple of times. However, the market basically centered around that number. This wasn't the first day and it's not the only time that number was important, but inside the numbers members knew early out of the gate that number was important. They also knew the one above was basically slightly above the high of the day, right around 293, slightly above. And what we also knew is that the majority of the day was likely to be nothing other than a chop shop. Above 292.50, the market's okay. However, the next level that it needed to really grind its way through wasn't that far away, and it couldn't do it. On the flip side, they had an opportunity to really hit the market. You're in the middle of a reversal. It doesn't happen. You finish right on what was really an important number for the day. Where does that leave you going into the weekend? Where does that leave you going into next week? Great question. Back to the daily chart. What do I think is going to happen going into next week? Well, let's get something right out on the table. We don't know what's going to happen. What I'm going to do now is lay out a couple of scenarios so that we can kind of have a jump on things. Let's talk about the bull case. Let's talk about the bear case. First, let's discuss where we are. We're at or near the top of the range. We went to close to the top of the range today. And when I say top of the range, it could be a little bit higher than we went today. Take this into account. You have this bear flag pattern. You can draw it with an upward sloping trend line. You can draw it straight with pivots. You can draw it any way you want so a trader or an analyst is able to manipulate a chart into believing or making you or even themselves believe whatever they want to believe. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try and eliminate some of that and we're going to talk strict numbers in terms of the bull case. We're near the top of the range. We're near the top end of that channel, if you will. Where does the bull case find its way out of the field and back onto the trail? Before we get into the number, and the number is not a magic number, it's a pretty obvious number, but let me frame it out like this. There's a lot of people expecting the downside. Now we talk about stuff like this all the time. You don't want to necessarily be running with the herd all the time. Sometimes it's okay. In a bull market, you run with the herd, everybody makes money, everybody's happy, that's fine. However, when the trick trap fool and frustrate crew is out, you don't necessarily want to be with the herd. Herd might be right, herd might be wrong. I'm not paying attention to the herd. I've got my own schematic. I'm giving it to you. I don't know if it's going to work out, but I'm giving it to you. So here's the layout. 
everybody's expecting the market to fall apart. Everybody's expecting the trap door to open and the market to slide right through. So here's the way I'm going to handle that. If the market begins closing daily, even hourly is certainly a hint. But if the market begins closing daily above this pivot high and this high right here is 294.15, closing daily above that high could create a vacuum to the upside. Let me explain a little bit further because there's a story along with the number. Remember, I have the email indicator. I know what everybody's doing. There are a lot of shorts out there. Mostly, in my opinion, and this is what I think from the homework that I've done, I think the majority of the shorts are on the retail side, the average Joe, you and me. I think the institutional traders have some hedges out there. I think there are some shorts out there, but I'm not 100% sure that they're all convinced the market's going to fall apart just yet. So the story has two sides. Today was a top, and we go straight down, and the bear wedge or bear flag pattern just plays out. Period. Full stop. That's the immediate term bear case. However, let's say we flip it around and we begin closing hourly above that pivot high that we just discussed, and certainly daily above that pivot high, you're going to see two things happen. You're going to see some traders begin to cover. That'll create another leg in a short squeeze. At the same time, you're going to get traders like me that are going to hop on the long side, buy the market using a close below that same pivot and ride a vacuum higher. How much higher? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Why? Now you got to stay on your toes. We're throwing the ball around the horn and I gave you a short hop on purpose. But here's the reason why. It's a message. Let me frame this side conversation out like this. This is really only directed at the traders out there running a service or whatever you want to call it similar to mine. You're welcome here. We're all in this together. We're all in this to be profitable. If you can learn from me, great. I learn from others just the same. We all learn from others throughout our lives. I obviously have a lot of interests outside the market. When I want to learn something, I have my go-to people. I go learn, just like you're doing with me. But here's the net-net. Some of us obviously have an overlap of viewership. So I get told what and when you're copying stuff. All I'm asking is this. Do a better job at pretending you're not stealing stuff. Outside of that, we're good. All right, let's regroup, get back in our lane, see what we've got. The reversal candle thing. Let's talk about that for a moment. Was today a reversal candle? Let's talk about the bear case. The bear case is, is that this bear flag pattern is actually going to work and the market's going to come down and do what it's supposed to do in this type of formation. How will we know if the bear case is on? Intraday, inside the numbers members will know as soon as I know if we can identify an intraday reversal. We began to identify one today and we started putting some numbers on the board on both ends. We started putting numbers on the downside, numbers on the pivot side, numbers on the upside where it would turn bullish again. So we try and do that. We try and be as fluid as the market is if possible. But how would you know from a bigger picture perspective how would you know from a daily chart perspective? Right now, from a daily chart perspective, the only way you really know that it's game on is breaking down below the lows. Other than that, we can continue to go back and forth in torture land. Do we know how the market's going to open up after the Labor Day holiday weekend? Of course, we don't know. There's certainly a bucket full of people that will claim to know, and then if they're right, they come back over the top and say, see, I told you so, I'm right. The problem is, it's a coin toss. It's easy right now to say the market's going to be down because one day we know we're going to wake up to a big down market, or it's going to happen in the middle of the day, we're going to see a big time reversal and go from there. But right now, we haven't seen it, which brings us back to today's reversal. Is it a reversal candle? No. What it is to me is a day where we went up, we hit the 50 period moving average, and we went back down, and the spider closed down 13 cents. So what? You have to look at it that way. Why is that? Because we were less than even the 90 day average in volume. 
When you see something like that, it's not a real reversal. It's a day before a holiday weekend. If this was a reversal, you would have had to see at least 125, 140, 150 million share type of trading. At least that tells you that the trades weren't just coming out of Schwab and E-Trade. So while visually, if you're in the bear camp, you can certainly convince yourself or justify this as a reversal day. However, I can't classify it as a reversal day because we really didn't have any push behind it. Although, that doesn't mean the market can't be down next week. It just means I can't classify this as a reversal candle or a reversal day. For me, it just doesn't hit enough of the high notes. It's a weekly close, so let's take a look at the weekly chart. Same bear flag pattern. We don't really have to draw it out again. It's the same chart. And right here on the screen, it looks pretty uniform. On the daily chart, you can certainly see some uniformity. But you can also see some sloppiness. You can definitely see the pain in here for some traders during this time. Back on the weekly chart, looks pretty clean. On the weekly chart, you can start to see visually why, or at least understand what I was saying in terms of closing above the highs. We begin closing daily above these highs that were made during the period of the last four weeks of trading, that has to be, at least in my mind, important. By the way, not only will you have traders covering shorts if that happens, you'll also have traders hopping on the long side like we mentioned before. So you have really a double whammy. What does the double whammy create? It creates the vacuum. How high can the vacuum take us? I'm not telling you, I already told you that. The more those other guys copy, the less I tell. What's doing over in Camp IWM? We had that nice low that was put in the other day, and we're pretty much in the spot that we discussed, right around 150. It's not where we are at the close, but in terms of the high of the day. The high of day happens to be 149.97. The high of the breakdown candle was what? 150.11. What did we talk about yesterday? 150.11. Where was the close yesterday? 149.11. I don't have to show you the number. You remember if you were in the last video. Well, you weren't in the last video, but if you watched the last video. And the other reason why I don't have to double check the number is because I eat, sleep, and breathe numbers. I remember the number. Where was the next one above? Another dollar higher. 151.11. Maybe it wasn't exactly 11, it might have been a few pennies short, but it was about another dollar. Is it plus or minus, positive or negative, bullish or bearish, that the IWM closed above the 20 period moving average? Well, I'm going to have to say it's neither. I'm not really looking at the 20 period moving average as being extremely important right now. What's more important right now are the higher numbers that would really correspond with the same type of setup that we looked at in the SPY, so the top of that range. What's interesting here is that the IWM is farther away from the top, or at least hypothetically, the top isn't exactly the same, but conceptually, it's farther away from the top of its range as the SPY is, from its range so that in and of itself to me is a sign of weakness because I look at the IWM as my favorite market leading indicator therefore I have to take that information put it on the table as a puzzle piece because it's lagging it's telling me the IWM in the bigger scheme of things is still lagging the SPY doesn't mean we can't go up Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that it's just the larger picture when I look at the global type stuff and I don't mean global markets just meaning a higher level stuff 30,000 foot view 25,000 whatever thousand you want how high do those anti-global warming jets fly about 50 60,000 feet up we're taking a high level peak there's a lot of stuff above for the IWM in order for the IWM to really turn bullish it would have to get up into the 50 and 100 period moving average start getting above it until and unless that happens even though there's a lot of points in between nothing really turns bullish until you begin closing above this particular area until and unless that happens this is still essentially 
a bear flag pattern, bear wedge pattern, call it anything you want. You can still go up here, but it doesn't really turn bullish until you jump over this closing high, over these moving averages, and then you have the trend line sloping down. So the IWM has a lot of work to do. The bulls for the IWM had a lot of work to do to turn this puppy around. It's been done before. Didn't they do it in May when everybody else thought the market was collapsing? They went down for one month and turned around. I'm not saying that's what's happening. What I'm saying is you have to know both sides. You have to be prepared for both sides. You never know when you're going to get a pie in the face. Sometimes you can feel it coming, but sometimes it comes out of nowhere. How about the weekly chart? It's the close of the week. We have to look at the weekly chart of the IWM. It's only fair. Anything positive here? Absolutely not. In terms of the weekly chart, nothing doing until and unless you can close a week above 151.08. Until and unless you can do that, that's a Friday close. This is bearish below all the moving averages except the 200, and it's headed lower. It's drifting lower. It's wide points, wide swings in both directions. The ranges can be wide, but when you narrow it down or zoom out a little bit and look at a weekly chart, for example, you can see all the market's been doing for the past month is eating time off the clock, torturing traders. Nothing more, nothing less. This was a summer project for the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew. Anything different going on down at the transportation department? Not really. The chart is very, very similar to the IWM, very, very similar to the SPY. They don't all necessarily have to trade in lockstep every single day, but in general terms, they're all doing the same thing. All markets are pretty much trading together. Is the weekly chart telling us any information that A, we don't already know, or B, we should know? And the answer is not really. It looks very similar to the IWM. The candles look different. The price ranges are different. But the chart, for all intents and purposes, is rather close to the same. It's in a bearish position until and unless you can get over those moving averages on a weekly close at a minimum. And that, in and of itself, doesn't necessarily guarantee you anything. Why? Because you will have to first test and close above the breakdown candle high. Can they do that? Let me give you the bull case for a moment. Remember the catapult conversation? Isn't this the flip side of what we've just been discussing for the bear case? Isn't this a bull case? See how I can manipulate your thinking anytime I want? That's not the goal. It's to give you an awareness that that can happen. It does happen. We search for information we want. It's called confirmation bias. Can this be real? Why not? Just go with me on this for a second. It is a bull case. It doesn't mean I believe it. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. It's just a case. For how long is the market collapsing? It's always collapsing. Every time the market goes down for a few days or a few weeks, the market's collapsing. There's always people waiting for the trap door. It's not just now. It's just always. The market always climbs a wall of worry. That's not my term. That's an old term, obviously. Do I think this is going to happen? Do I think the transports are going to break out to new highs and keep going? No, I don't think that's going to happen at all. That's not what the monthly chart is telling me. And every single trader that's taken the course, lazy e-mini trader, can see exactly what I'm looking at. We know the number that this market has to trade above on a monthly closing basis in order to turn around. Until and unless that happens, no dice. No shirt, no shoes, no dice. How about the Silicon Valley people, the Qs? Same routine on the daily chart, same routine on the weekly chart. We haven't looked at an hourly chart, so now as as good a time as any, here we have an hourly chart bear flag pattern. So if this is true to form, what is this telling us? Boom, what's down here? Your gap, where's that headed? If in fact, this is actually going to work as advertised, 185 is the spot. Could it go lower than 185? Of course, that's a target. Now, while we're on the hourly chart and we're mentioning a target, 
I would like to try and address a question that came in and it was a little bit difficult to answer in email form. So I want to try and do it in this video. We've done it before and I think people benefit when we go through this little exercise. It has to do with trading, it has to do with the time frame that we're looking at and it has to do with what we're thinking at the time versus what we might be thinking about the bigger picture. We've been talking in this video a lot about the bigger picture mainly because it's a weekend edition. But since we're on a shorter term chart, we're on an hourly chart, we can have this conversation. So let's take a real example. Let's take where the market was at a low here and we gap up and let's say, just for argument's sake, it's a hypothetical situation. We think we should be long the market because of X, Y, and Z. Doesn't matter what the reason is. Doesn't matter what the chart setup is. Maybe it was just from the other day, for example, when we had this bull flag pattern and we said, hey, this is going to play out. So we're long the market. That trade, that concept, and that thought process was based off of an hourly chart. That doesn't necessarily change my opinion on what I think is going to happen in the longer term. Something else may happen in the market to change that opinion for the longer term. For example, if we start closing above certain price levels, I'm going to be looking north rather than south, at least for the time being. But in terms of an hourly chart, there's not a lot that's going to change the bigger picture until and unless those prices are closed above. So the thought process really has to be compartmentalized and the trades can be compartmentalized. I'll give you an example. I can have a trade that I believe the market will trade down between now and some point in the future. So my trade is a longer term trade. Could be an options trade, could be an exchange traded fund, could be a short trade of some other variety. At the same time, I could also believe that the market's going higher within the next few days. I'm going to be in that trade too. We can win both trades. The longer term trade isn't over. We may be in the red, but it's not over. In the meanwhile, there's no reason we can't make money and make up for lost time or buffer some of the losses that are occurring in the longer term trade. Now, when you ratchet it down from a 60-minute chart to a 15-minute chart, similar things apply, but you're not necessarily going to likely have two different trades in opposite directions based on those two different charts. However, what is taught in the course is that the charts need to coincide with each other. They need to confirm each other to really put on a trade. We'll leave the rest of that for the course. How about the XLF? Is the financials telling us anything? Well, they were up one-third of 1%. One They're not really in a different position than anything else, so there's nothing new on the daily chart that we haven't already seen today. But they are in a different position on an hourly chart than we just saw in the queues. That's interesting. That's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. Doesn't it look almost the opposite? Not quite, but it's certainly not in a bearish position. That's why it's a puzzle piece. Weekly chart... Similar, but not necessarily the same position as some of the others, but it is a bear flag pattern. It's not in the same position as it relates to the moving averages. I find that interesting, but I'm not sure that we can really do much with that right here. It may be a puzzle piece, but really it's still in the box. SMH, interesting position. We talked about this in the last video. It's really a bear flag pattern, but again, we're above the moving averages. So if we start getting above these highs here that come into the similar position that we talked about in the SPY, then there's some room to run here, and that has me concerned for the bear case. I know this is a bear flag, but there's nothing that says that this can't run higher with a spark under the hood. Above all these moving averages, it's a bear flag pattern, but it's still above all the moving averages. So you have to take it for what it is. This is a puzzle piece. It's definitely on the table. I think it's actually a pretty big puzzle piece. I've kind of seen this one before. I'm just saying. I've seen this one before. It's on watch. And with that, folks, it's pretty much everything I wanted to and intended to discuss. So I will leave you with this. I appreciate all the followers, 
all the subscribers, all the members, everybody that's taken the course, everybody that is desperately trying to get better to achieve whatever goal it is that that individual, yes, you, want to achieve. I appreciate you very much. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.